In this video, I will go over exploration analysis technique in Google Analytics 4. So let's go to Google Analytics and see how it works. In Google Analytics 4, go to analysis, analysis hub, and then pick the analysis that you created or start from scratch. I started creating this analysis in previous videos. So I'm going to use that. And here I am in the interface where I can start to create my analysis. The technique is exploration. And I'm currently looking at active users. This is the active users for this time frame. Now let's say I want to look at all the events that are happening on my site or app. In that case, I need to look at dimension called event name. That dimension is available right here. If the dimension that you want to look at is not available in this list, then click on plus and then find that dimension here, select it, and it'll appear in this list. I already have event name, so I don't need to do anything. I'm just going to click on X. I can use this dimension and drop it either in rows or column section. If I drop in rows, then each event name will show in a separate row. If I drop in column, then each event will show up as columns up here. I am going to drop it in rows. So here you have all the events that are happening on your site and how many active users did that event or engaged with that event. Session start every user has to start a session. That's why the number of session start is equal to active user for that time frame. Some of the events are not page view events and hence the number is lower and so forth. Now let's say I want to look at these events by devices and how many active users are involved in them. In that case, I need a second dimension and that is device category. Now you have to get familiar with what dimensions are available so that you can quickly select them. So I highly suggest that you become familiar with all the dimensions and metrics that are available. Clicking on this plus sign will show you all the various dimensions that are available. So device category is right here and I'm gonna drop it in columns so that you can see how it looks in columns. So here you have device category in columns and event names in rows and the metrics that's displayed is active users. So you have session start on desktop, this is the number. Let's say you don't like this view and you wanna try a different view. So I'm gonna take this device category and drop it under rows and here you have device category and the event name. However, you are only seeing 10 rows. The reason is because we have picked show rows as 10. So I can go ahead and click here and pick 500. This way I can see a lot more data. So you have session start on desktop and then session start on mobile is right here. They are all sorted by active users. Now there are two other options, which row you want to start from and then nested row. So let's take a look at what happens when you change this. Let's say I want to start from row 11. I don't want to see the first 10 rows. In that case, I can do that 11. And now my data starts to only show rows 11 onwards. So I'm gonna go back to one. And then you have nested rows. By picking this nested rows, your dimensions will be nested. That means event name will have device category as nested dimension. So let's go ahead and change this to yes. And here you can see your event name. And then you have desktop, mobile, and tablet. Similarly, page views, desktop, mobile, and tablet. Any dimension you add here, will be nested under device category. Let's say if I go ahead and pick country and drop it here, now it's nested within desktop and scrolling down, you will be able to see the mobile data. 
However, this is too messy to look at, so I'm going to remove it. In order to remove it, you have few options. One, you can click on the X on the dimension. Second, you can just simply click and drag it back and drop it here. And the third option is to click undo because that was the last action you took. So click on undo. This undo can go multiple steps back. So you can keep clicking undo if you want to go back multiple steps. Scrolling down. If you are using columns, then you can decide how many columns do you want. And then you have the values, which is the metrics that you're looking at, which is active user in this case. If you want another metric, you can pick that here and put it. Let's say if I want to look at event count, I can do that by putting it here. Now I've got active users and event counts. However, I don't like this view, so I'm gonna again go back and just focus on active users as this is much cleaner data to look at. Now, here is where your column is showing as a bar chart. See these bar charts? You can change that by changing the cell type. So I can click here and do a plain text. In that case, it's just numbers. Or I can do a heat map, and here's my heat map. So whatever visualization works for you, you can use that. I am going to change it back to bar chart. Other things that you can do here are to use a filter and or use a segment. So let's see how those work. Let's assume I only want to look at those users who came from US. Since it's a user attribute, segment makes sense. So I'm gonna go and find that segment, drag it, and put it in segment. Sometimes you might encounter an error like this. If that happens, you can click on retry, and here is your data. This shows you all the active users which came from US, and total just means it's the total across these values. So you've got active users, on desktop and mobile, where the event name was session start. Now let's say you want to filter down and only look at purchase events, like this one. In that case, you can use a filter. So scroll down, and this is where you will be adding a filter. In order to add a filter, you can drop either a dimension or a metric. In this case, I am looking at purchase event, which is a dimension. So pick event name, drop it here, and then select the type. I'm gonna say contains. You can do exact match as well, and then purchase. Once you do that, click on apply. Now we are only looking at purchase event. You can add more filters here as well if you want. You can also create a filter by directly interacting with your data. It allows you to create filters on the fly by right clicking in the chart. So let's say if I right click on this mobile row, I can include only this selection. That means it'll only show me purchase on mobile or I can exclude that selection and it will show me rest of the data. If you already have a filter right here, that filter will remain and this will be applied on top of that. So let's say I only want to include selection. In that case, now it's looking at purchase mobile. And you'll notice a bunch of other filters got created for you. Clicking on these filters will show you what that filter is about. You can go ahead and remove that filter if you would like. So that's another way for you to quickly create filters by right clicking and interacting directly with the data in your analysis. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these two filters to show you other functionality. Right click again on any row and when you click exclude selection, it is going to use both these criteria that are showing up. 
So it'll remove page views as well as desktop from your data. So click on exclude selection. And you'll notice there is no desktop as well as page view event is gone. There are two filters that got created. Click on it. Does not exactly match page view, which means it's removing page view and only showing the data that does not match page view. And similarly, it's also removing device category that does not exactly match desktop. So when you are interacting with the data here, keep in mind where you are clicking and whether you are doing exclude or include and always verify the definitions of the filters that got created to make sure you are excluding and including the right set of data. In addition to these, you can also change the visualization of your data by clicking on various chart types. Keep in mind, when you pick a particular chart, that might not work with the data that you have selected. You can play with it, and if it doesn't work, you can always revert back. So that's all about explore analysis technique. Go ahead and play with it. The more you practice, the better you'll become. Keep in mind, Analysis Hub is the place where you will be spending most of your time. So you need to get really comfortable with it. Good luck.